Hello there. Welcome to Architect Interview Question Series. In this series, we are covering many topics like uh, scalability, solid principles, and then like uh, maintainability and different components like Kafka and all. And these are the terms which are used in system design as well. So I would say go through these videos and prepare yourself with the different kind of concepts for system design and architecture. And it's not only just for the interview purpose, it's mainly for like your knowledge perspective Try to gain this knowledge so that you can make use of it in your projects. So the question is, what are the solid principles in software architecture? So it's like a theoretical question, but if you see practically, it has a lot of usage when you are trying to design your system, when you're coming up with your project. In that case, it's very useful. So SOLID is like an acronym for five principles, S-O-L-I-D, and all of these stand for like specific uh, one principle each, and these are mainly for the object-oriented design. So S stands for single responsibility principle. O stands for open close principle. L is for Liskov substitution principle. I for interface segregation principle, and D for dependency inversion principle. So if you develop a software with keeping these principles in mind, then it will increase the maintainability, flexibility, and understandability of the software. So it will be easy to maintain, like easier to make changes in future if you follow the solid principles of object-oriented design. So let's understand, and these were proposed by Martin Fowler like a uh, long time back, and then a lot of people have enhanced onto it. So let's, uh, go on and understand what are these principles so first one is s which is single responsibility principle and in short this says a class should only have a single responsibility right so mainly it is coming from domain driven design where we are focusing on a domain and designing things for a specific domain right so the domain of a class has to be limited right which means like if we are creating a class it should be serving a specific purpose it's not like we are creating a generic class which can create like multiple kind of things right so we have creating a class with specific purpose and the benefit that we get is that if there is any change in that class then it will not have impact on like large number of classes right so that is what the benefit we get that any change in the specification of a software like if you need to add any feature so it doesn't need to impact all the classes it will be impacting only that specific kind of a class right and that way i mean you will be able to maintain it with the lesser like you know invasive changes in the future but if you are creating a like functionality across multiple classes you may have to change many places right so so remember this principle that class should have only single responsibility so some of the examples are like if you have a builder pattern you are using a builder class if you have a helper like you know you can create a helper class or utils classes right so you don't need to change all the places you just change it one specific place when you, the change in feature happens the next one is uh, open close principle and this is a very important principle I mean, in day-to-day -day life we use it a lot say so the open close principle there are different software entities like classes, interfaces, modules, etc. And these mod things should be open for extension but closed for modification. So this is a concept of object-oriented design. Then once you have defined a class, then you should not be modifying that class so frequently. The class should be extended, right? I mean, if you have a new feature that uh, is required, then you can extend the class you can use inheritance you can use that class as a parent class and then make changes in the child class if you want to add more features right so what happens with this is that if you follow this strategy that parent class is there and child classes are extended then existing clients of their class the parent class will not be affected right this will make sure that your changes are minimal so once we, uh, how do we follow this uh, principle is that we design a class, then we develop it, and then we can like compile it, version it, and say that this is our class or this is our library, 
and that's what we are providing now the with that version there are clients who will use this class or this library or this module right and they will be dependent on that now in future if you are making any changes into this library then make sure it is backward compatible right so that then the way we do backward compatible is that we can start creating a child class and the child class is having the additional behavior so if there are new clients they can get that benefit by calling the child class so point to remember here is that we use inheritance most of the time to follow this principle and uh, it's a very important principle for object oriented design then comes uh, another principle uh, list curve substitution principle and this is also like from a computer scientist and here the principle is very simple that as per this principle any object in a program should be replaceable with an instance of its subtype and the program should work as it is like when we use inheritance and then we have a parent class and the child class now in such a scenario the child class should always support the behavior that were present in the parent class you can add like extra behavior but the parent class behavior should always be supported by the child class which means that if we are passing like you know i mean there is a method in which we have a parent class and that is validating some kind of a input parameter right now in child class you should not like uh, create another method where this uh, parameter validation is dropped right so it should not be like you know like a stricter kind of a validation or a change in this validation right so that way you we have to design by contract right so what we do is that the parent whatever the parent is expecting that has to hold true you cannot like uh, uh, like make it more strict like stricter or you cannot make it more loose because you will be uh, violating the interface with which the parent class method was created right so that way you can have a new method which has a new kind of signature where you are dropping certain things and that is uh, applicable to new clients whereas for the existing clients if they are using same method signature then the child class should not like making much changes into uh, the like restrictions on that right so that's what the list of substitution principle is that which means the clients existing clients can easily use with the parent class or child class with confidence then comes another principle of interface segregation and this principle is uh, quite simple here the principle says that it is preferable to have multiple client specific interfaces than keeping just one general purpose interface again it is coming from the first one like as a uh, principle uh, which is for single responsibility so here like uh, what we do is that let's say we are creating interface to deal with some different client now in future another client comes up so it's good to have multiple client specific interfaces like for a new client a new interface rather than keeping one general purpose interface for everybody if you do that then any time some change happens multiple clients will be impacted right so the purpose of this principle is to ensure that there are minimum changes and minimum side effects when there is a change to some specific interface right so if you have like clients for mobile interface that can be a specific interface like phase if your clients for like website you have specific interface clients for this geography so you can have like multiple interfaces which are specific to the clients so no need to keep one general interface and always keep juggling the priorities between that okay. so try to segregate your interfaces and the last principle is on dependency inversion dependency inversion like you might have studied in, in different kind of topics also here uh, it's very simple and if you see this diagram based on that also you'll understand so this principle says the class should depend upon abstractions and not on concrete implementations right so here if you see this example like you have an electric uh, like socket and you're connecting a lamp now like i mean you we do not want to connect like you know lamp directly into the socket and solder it right permanently what we do is that we have plugs that are plug and play kind of a thing right okay, so we can put the plug there and the lamp can be lighted 
and if we don't need it we can take the plug out and the lamp will not be lighted right so there's no need to solder it because if you solder it then if you have to take it out you'll have to break the circuit and like it will be a costly affair right same way like if you are creating a specific class another in another class then we don't need to use like new to create a class rather we pass on this uh, responsibility to a container right so both of these things can exist independently right like this this uh, socket as well as the lamp can exist independently and they can uh, exist with each other also right so mainly understand there are two parts to this principle firstly the high level module should not be dependent on low level modules right so whatever modules you are going to create they should not be dependent on that and both of these modules should depend on abstractions like whenever you deal like you create an interface and they deal with the abstractions right and abstraction should not depend on the details details should depend on the abstractions right so like in this case uh, i mean the socket has three holes and there is a specific kind of way in which you connect that is the interface and when you put your like you know the lamp has a different uh, thing and the socket has a different thing it's all about the interface so electricity is generated somewhere else and between lamp and socket lamp and electricity you have this socket as an interface so you are depending on the abstraction that this is how electricity can be transferred from one place to another place right so you have to depend on the abstraction not on concrete implementation that's why we use a lot of time interfaces and those interfaces are passed as beans and the real instance of bean is created by the container at the runtime. All right, so that's all on solid principles. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. And if you have still any doubts or questions, do paste in the comments and we'll be happy to answer that. Thank you and have a great day.